Hey friends, my name is Yi, and you're watching Yi Mr. Easy. And welcome to a new video for IGCSE at Madison today. We have questions for higher derivatives and applications. And these questions are from this website right here. So I'll link the PDF in the description or you can check it out on my website. And before you get into it, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. And we'll move on to question 1. Given that y equals 2x cubed plus 4x squared minus 6x plus 3, find d squared y over dx squared or the second derivative. So we know that y equals 2x cubed plus 4x squared plus minus 6x plus 3. We can first find the first derivative, dy over dx, will be equal to 2 times 3 is 6x squared plus 4 times 2 is 8x minus 6, and the 3 just cancel out. So to find the second derivative, you just derivative the first derivative to find the second derivative. So d square y over dx square will be equal to 6 times, uh, 6 times 2 is 12, so 12x. And 8x just becomes 8, and it's the minus 6 cancels out. So that's the second derivative. So number 2, given that f of x equals 2x square uh, times of 40 minus 3x, find f uh, like double prime x or the second derivative. So we can first expand the bracket out first at times by this, times by this so that it's much easier. So f of x equals 80x squared minus 6x cubed. So the first derivative of like, or like f prime x will be equal to 80 times 2, 160x minus 6 times 3 is 18x squared. Like so. So to find the second derivative or like f double prime x, you just differentiate the f prime x or the first derivative. So f double prime x will be equal to this will be 160 only, 160 minus 12. Uh, sorry, 18 times by 2 will get us the second derivative for 18x squared, which will be 36x, and that's the second derivative. Then question three. Given that f of s equals 4x minus 1 uh, to the power of 5, find f double prime of like 0. So let's just take it step by step by finding the first derivative first. So f of x is equal to 4x minus 1 to the power of 5. That means f prime x will be equal to 5 times by the, the derivative of the bracket 4 and then power minus 1, 4x minus 1 to the power of 4 or 20 times 4x minus 1 to the power of 4. That means that f double prime x will be equal to 20, just remains because it's a constant 20, times by 4, times by 4, which is the derivative of the bracket, uh, times by 4x minus 1, and the power minus 1 will be 3. So simplifying it, we'll get us 20 times 4 times 4, or 20 times 16, 320 and 4x minus 1 to the power of 3. So to find f double prime 0, you just do, you just basically substitute the whole x value by 0, which means that it's 320 times 4 times 0, 0 minus 1 to the power of 3, and put it into a calculator, 320 times 4 times 0 minus 1 times, uh, to the, sorry, to the, to the power of uh, 3, you'll get us minus 320. Like so, because this part cancels out to become minus 1. Like so. And given that s equals 3t squared minus 1 squared, calculate the value of the second derivative when t equals 1 over 2. So we first have to um, di uh, differentiate uh, this, uh, this function right here. So s equals 3 times t squared minus 1 squared that means that differentiating x with respect to t, because we learned this in the rate of change last uh, last two lessons, dx over dt will be equal to 3 times by 2 times by the derivative of the inside 2t and t squared minus 1 to the power of 1. That means that d, uh, d square x over dt square will be equal to, uh, let's just simplify this first, 6 it will be equal to 12 t and t squared minus 1. So the, 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 we can basically just expand the bracket first. So 12t cubed minus 12t 
And differentiating, differentiating it, we get 12 times 3, which is 36 t squared, minus 12, right? So we define the value of the second derivative when t equals 1 over 2. So we can substitute t by 1 over 2 from here. So 36 times 1 over 2 squared, minus 12. Put it into our calculator, like 36 times by 1 over 2 squared, 1 over 2, oops, 36 times 1 over 2 squared minus 12, that will give us an answer of minus 3, like so. And then find the coordinates of the two turning points of, on the curve y equals x times x squared minus 3. So we can first expand the bracket, so it would be y equals x cubed minus 3x. Therefore, dy over dx will be equal to 3x squared minus 3. So to solve for x, we get as x squared equals 1, and therefore x equals plus or minus 1. That means that we have two points right here. We have 1 something and minus 1 something. So put that back into the original equation of like x equals 1 and x equals minus 1. So therefore, x equals 1 will be 1 times by 1 squared minus 3. That will get us an answer of minus 2. And the opposite will be true for minus 1, it will be 2. So these two are the turning points. And number 2, determine the coordinates of the minimum point of y equals x squared minus 4x plus 4. So we know that this is just a quadratic graph and it's a positive u-shaped quadratic. So the shape will be like this, like um roughly like this, and it's not, uh, not to scale. So we know that the point that we, the, the turning point that we find is automatically a minimum point, so we don't have to worry about the second derivative. So y equals x squared minus 4x plus 4. This means that dy over dx will be equal to 2x minus 4. And solve for x, that means that x equals 2, right? So now we have to put into the original equation to find the corresponding y value. So for x equals 2, and therefore the y value equals 2 squared, minus 4 times 2, plus 4, they will get us an answer of 0. So this uh, 2, 0 will be the coordinates of the minimum point. And this is just not to scale. And lastly, y equals 2 over 3x cubed minus 2x squared minus 5 is an equation of the curve. Find the coordinates of the turning point of the curve and determine whether each of the turning point is the maximum or minimum point. So we know that this is a cubic graph, like something like this cubic graph, and the turning point will be will have two turning points, because the number of turning points will be equal to the maximum degree or the, the maximum power minus one. So y equals two over three x cubed, two over three x cubed minus two x squared minus five. dy over dx will be equal to two over three times three will be two x cubed minus 4x, and just that's it. So just solve for x, we have to equate that to 0. So it will be factorized x, x, 2x, minus 4, equals 0. That means that x equals 0, and x equals 2, like so. So we can find the corresponding uh, y values. So when x equals 0, y will be something, and when x equals 2, y will be something. Let's put it into the original equation. So 2 over 3 times 0 cubed minus 2 times 0 squared minus 5 will be just minus 5. And for the 2, it will be 2 over 3 times 2 cubed minus 2 times 2 squared minus 2 times 2 squared minus 5. It will get us minus 23 over 3. Like, oops, minus 23 over 2, over, uh, over, 3, sorry. And these two are the turning points. And we have to determine whether they are a maximum or minimum point. So we have to know the second derivative, so I'll just write it here. So d square y over dx square will be equal to 4x minus 4. So we can substitute each x value into uh, 4x minus 4 to determine whether it's a maximum or minimum point depending on what sign, what symbol they get. So 4 for x equals 0, 4 times 0 minus 4 will have a gradient of negative. 
So a gradient of negative means that it will go up, uh, flat, up, flat, down, right? Because the overall gradient will be negative. That means that it will be a maximum point. So this will be maximum point. And to find the second point, we have x equals 2. So let's put 2 into the second derivative. So 4 times by 2 minus 4 will get us a gradient of a positive gradient. That means that it will go like down, flat, up because the, po the overall gradient is a positive. That means this will be a minimum point. And that's the answer. And that's it for this video for questions for higher derivatives and applications. And I hope you will find it useful and helpful. And if you did, please leave a like and subscribe and ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. And if you have any comments or constructive feedbacks about my channel or my YouTube or my website, you can drop them off in the comment section and I'll reply to them. Or you can email me when my email is in my YouTube bio. And check out my social media in the description, for example, LinkedIn or YouTube or Instagram. And if you need any learning resources or any teaching resources, you can check out my website in the description or you can type it out in your browser at www.yemixeasy.com And I hope you'll find it useful and helpful and I'll see you all in the next video which will be quite a rules and examples for derivatives of trig functions which will be very interesting. But until then, stay safe and happy learning.